So we are live now. So we'll start the session. So very good morning to all. It's my immense pleasure to welcome you all for this Knowledge 4.0 webinar series, which is one of the unique initiative of our chairman, Mr. P. C. Ram, a first generation successful entrepreneur, managing director of MK Group of Companies. So under Knowledge 4.0 webinar series, we have been conducting series of webinars such as technical webinars, career guidance webinars, research webinars, and many. So today we have a technical webinar. It's it's a kind of mixture. It's a, not an exact technical webinar, but it's kind of storytelling, even though it's related to your career uh, growth and perspectives. So storytelling. So the art of storytelling is today's title of the webinar. Chennai Institute of Technology is established in 2010 by our honorable chairman, Mr. P. C. Ram. Now our institute is being within the top 10 institute among um, the private engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. So it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Sabhapati Narayanan, today's uh, guest. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. And a few words about Mr. Sabhapati. Sabhapati Narayanan is a storyteller and head of marketing, Pay Huddle Solutions. Sabha believes in power of anecdotal personal stories that can be used effectively in your communication. For him, an example is a story, an anecdote is a story, a conversation between two people is a story, and timeline about a person is a story. He does personal driven stories for organizations where he helps organizations and individuals evolve their differentiators and create sales worthy and PR worthy stories. He has been doing this for the past 10 years and he has helped craft more than 750 purpose driven stories and has conducted more than 50 workshops to date. It's our pleasure and honor to have you for this webinar series, sir. Over to you. Thank you. So we have around 663 participants as of now. I was uh, eight years old, and uh, I, along with a bunch of my friends, uh, we wanted to do a, we wanted to start a cricket club. So the first thing that came to our mind was we needed to buy a bat. So I, I used to live in a place called Vadapalni in Chennai those days. So uh, we went to a place called Pioneer Sports, and we inquired about a bat. So they said that it would cost us about 170 rupees. So we came back, and then we tried to get some money from our parents. And we were nine of us. So all of us could get only 10 rupees from each of our parents, because I'm talking about the early 80s. And uh, that's, that's a lot of money those days. So we managed to collect about 90 rupees. Then we went back to Pioneer Sports, and we asked him, uh, is it possible that he can accept 90 rupees and uh, give us a bat? And then the remaining uh, 80 rupees we will pay him the next month. So he said uh, that's not something that he can agree to. And he instead uh, gave us uh, an option of uh, giving the bat for 160 rupees. And along with it, he, he was willing to give oil for free. So we went back again to our parents uh, looking for some more money. And only the two of us could get uh, 10 rupees each. And the rest of them weren't successful. So we had about 110 rupees for a bat that was costing 160. So we were short of 50 rupees. So we, I came up with an idea. So why don't we all bring one rupee every day? So in six days time, we'll have the 50 rupees and we should be able to afford the bat in six days. Even one rupee was so difficult those days. We couldn't manage it even on the first day. So we were almost about to give up our uh, idea of starting a cricket club. And those days, uh, uh, we used to, not many people had televisions at home. And uh, uh, we used to get a Tamil movie every Sunday evening. So, and uh, all of us used to gather together at somebody's house and watch that movie. So we were all watching that movie on a Sunday evening. And in that movie, there were a bunch of bachelors who were unemployed and they don't have money for having food. So what they do is they go around the neighborhood and ask for old newspapers stating that they needed for uh, packing some stuff. So once they get these old newspapers, they went around selling those old newspapers in old, old paper marks. And with that money, they were having food. The moment we saw this scene, we all looked at each other and we came up with this idea. 
why don't we fund our cricket club with old newspapers? So we went across all the streets in our neighborhood. So we went to about six streets and 250 people contributed old newspapers from their houses. And we collected a ton of newspapers. And with that money, we went and sold all of those newspapers. And with that money, we not only ended up buying the bat, we've got the entire kit, the stumps, the gloves, the pads, everything that which we needed for the cricket club. And we named the cricket club as Eagle's Eyes Cricket Club. And we invited all those people who contributed old newspapers to come for the launch party. So till such time that I was in that neighborhood, we were, uh, those people who gave us the newspapers kept continuing to give us the old newspapers. And we, in fact, after a point in time, changed the cricket club name from Eagle's Eyes Cricket Club to Old Newspapers Cricket Club. So that's that's kind of what defines me as an individual. Okay, so it all started when I was eight years old. And since then, I have been carrying on my entrepreneurial journey right from my uh, school days to college days. I have been involved in multiple businesses. So till date, uh, I have been involved in 13 startups and of which three of it I'm currently running. And one of it, I uh, sold it for a profit and one of it, I did a stress sale. The remaining were uh, uh, failures. About eight of them were uh, failures, but uh, I continue to uh, go on this journey. So that that kind of gives an introduction. Uh, thank you, Bala, for having me in this uh, session. So today, what I will your uh, presentation was not visible, sir. Can you change your presentation? Is it visible now? Yes. Okay. All right. So, all right. So uh, what I will do is uh, I, I'll take you through. Uh, uh, some of the techniques that are used in storytelling, okay, and uh, uh, I'll do that using stories, okay. So most of you may have played this game called Chinese Whisper, where uh, we'll sit together in a circle and then somebody whispers something in somebody's ear, okay. So it goes around in circles and by the time it comes back to you, the message that you gave and the message that you are receiving are two totally different things. So that's how your communication gets diluted. So how do you make that communication stick? So that's where you need uh, things called stories, okay? So because uh, uh, we may forget what we learn, but we don't necessarily forget the stories that we have been told. So we still remember the stories that we have heard as children. So that's exactly why storytelling is very, very important when it comes to your communication. So what are the different elements of stories? So stories have multiple elements. One is a time marker or a place marker. So when you hear uh, last Tuesday, at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, you know that the story is coming, okay? Or uh, I was in a place called Karaikudi in the southern part of Tamil Nadu, and you know that there is a story that's coming. So it is actually a casual sequence of events. One event happens and it is followed by another event and it's followed by another event. So that's what makes a story. And the most important aspect of a story, even when you watch movies, is if there is no challenge, if there is no villain, or if there is no conflict, then there is no story. So the most important thing in any story is the conflict or the challenge or in movie parlance, if you look at it, you have a protagonist who's the hero or the heroine and you have an antagonist who's a villain or an anti-hero. So the, the villain or the anti-hero is very, very essential for a story for it to make sense. And then you hear people's names, you hear dialogues and you know you are uh, actually looking at a story. And a relevant statement is very, very important because when it comes to a classical story, you don't need a re relevant statement. But when it comes to education, when it comes to corporations, when it comes to your presentations and all that, you need to have a point that which you are driving with your story. So that's what we call as purpose-driven stories. So every story that you create has to have a purpose. So you can do multiple personal stories from your own life. So if you dig back at your life, so you will easily have about 40 to 50 stories. Okay, so you should craft all of these stories and use them according to the relevance that it brings, either at work or in your uh, teaching or uh, uh, as a part of your uh, organization's uh, story. Okay, so that's those are the elements that which needs to be looked at. But however, I, I told you about this uh, Chinese whispers, right? So most communications does not stick it does not reach the audience for which it is intended for so many a times uh, uh, that happens because of various reasons one is the abstraction of language when i say abstraction of language we tend to use a lot of jargons we tend to use a lot of ac acronyms so we should completely avoid usage of jargons and acronyms for the benefit of those audience even if it is one or two percentage of the audience that do not understand the acronyms and jargons that you, you use you should avoid using it for instance uh, in the year 2011 so there were three keynote speeches of uh, steve jobs of apple michael dell of dell computers and bill gates of uh, microsoft was analyzed for its readability and for its understandability of english and they call that as gunning fox index they call it as a gfi score so when a gfi score is about 12 which means you need to have 
12 years of formal education to understand the meaning of what is being spoken. So all of Steve Jobs' keynote addresses, you, you, you needed only 5.5 years of formal education to understand what he's speaking. Whereas for Michael Dell, it was 9.1. And for Bill Gates, the score was a whopping 10.7. So which shows why Apple was very, very successful in their communication, because their CEO himself took it took it upon himself to make sure that the communication that they do reaches the intended audience in a not so complex manner. And then I, uh, the other reason why communication does not stick is because of there's no context to what is being spoken. For instance, uh, there's this author called Victor Hugo. He wrote a book called Les Miserables. OK, and he was getting worked up about uh, after it got published and it was uh, rolled out for sales. He was getting uh, uh, worked up about uh, how it was doing. Can you see my screen? Bala? Yeah, I can. I can see yeah. the screen. OK, all right. So uh, Victor Hugo, he, he sent out a letter to his publisher with just a question mark in it. OK, and he received a reply from his publisher with an exclamation point. OK, so here the context was extremely clear because Victor Hugo is asking about how is the book doing? OK, and the publisher also knew the context extremely well. So he understood the question mark meant how is, how is the book doing? So he sent out an exclamation mark stating that the book is doing well. So the context has to if it is very clear, even this kind of cryptic communication would work. If it is not clear, you will have to explain the context to people before you get into the details. For instance, if you have to make an analogy between context and the details, the context is the forest, the details are the trees in it. OK, so we not, we tend to jump into the details without really explaining the context. So that is something that has to be uh, given a lot of importance. So basically, uh, if you look at it from that aspect, how do you define a story? So earlier we defined it as a sequence of events. So that's a very simplistic way of defining a story. But in this place, if you have to define it, so story is a fact wrapped in context and delivered with emotions. So unless you deliver it with emotions, so then it doesn't really become a story. So you need to bring in that conflict and the challenge while you are delivering the story. And then you have this thing called cursive knowledge. So cursive knowledge, we typically do an experiment with the participants. Okay, since it's a webinar, I won't be able to do it. However, I would explain what we what we typically do. So we divide the, the audience into two groups. Okay, so where one of them are tappers, the one of them are this one part one one group is tappers, one one group is listeners. So what we do is we pick up uh, very common uh, songs like Jingle Bells or Baba Black Sheep and things like that, where we ask you to sing in your mind and then tap it on your desk. And the listeners will have to guess. Most often than not, 95% of the listeners are not able to guess even the popular songs. It's not their problem. The problem is we don't know what it is not to know. Okay? When we speak, we don't know what it is not to know. We don't understand the fact that the audience members do not get what we are speaking. Okay, And we find it difficult to understand why is it that they are not getting what we are saying. So that's what we call as the curse of knowledge. So these are three reasons why your communication does not reach your audience or your messages don't stick. Okay, So one is the abstraction of language. The other one is absence of context. And the third one is the curse of knowledge. So uh, there, are, there are two CEOs uh, who set out into the woods for a weekend getaway. And they spot a grizzly bear at a distance. And one of the CEOs calmly takes out his pair of sneakers from his backpack and starts to put them on. The other CEO looks at him and says, you must be crazy. We can't really outrun a grizzly bear. To which the first CEO responds, I don't really have to outrun the grizzly bear, but I sure as hell can outrun you. So that, in a nutshell, is what competitive advantage is. Does this do three things to you? Does it make you understand what competitive advantage is? Can you remember it a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now? And can you retell the story without losing its essence? So this is what they call as a test of three. This was evolved by Dan Chip Heath, who wrote this book called Made to Stick. So it's, it's a fantastic book on communication and storytelling. So they came up with this test of three for storytelling, which is can you understand, can you remember, and can you retell? Okay, so that's, that's the uh, power of uh, this test of three. Okay, so you'll have to... Uh, when you do it as stories, it makes it easy for people to understand what is being said. It's very likely that you will remember what is told even a year from now or a few years from now. 
and you can retell without losing the essence you may use different words for telling that story you may not use the same words that i use or somebody else uses but you would use your own words but you would ensure that there is no dilution in communication so that's the power of uh, stories so uh, many of you may have seen this movie called uh, social network that's about uh, mark zuckerberg and uh, facebook so in that I, i'll tell you three scenes from that movie and uh, uh, the fact that stories influence decisions so in uh, in one of the scenes uh, mark zuckerberg sets up uh, sets up a meeting with sean parker it may be something founder of a company called napster so sean parker tries to uh, make mark think big using a statement of fact where he says what's big is not a million dollars what's big is a billion dollars in another scene in the same movie he uses a metaphor sean uses a metaphor to mark to make him think big where he says when you go fishing you could catch a lot of small fish or you could catch a big fish and in another scene he narrates a story a stanford mba by name roy raymond wanted to buy lingerie for his wife and he couldn't go to a departmental store and buy it because he felt that he may be considered a pervert so he in order to avoid uh, men being considered perverts when they want to buy things like lingerie for their wives so he wanted to set up a high end store so he borrowed some money and set up a store called victoria secrets and he made about half a million dollars in the first year and then he came up with a catalog and then he started a few more branches and in 5 years time he sold victoria secrets for 4 million dollars happy ending right but the only problem is in a few years victoria secrets was valued at 500 million dollars and roy raymond jumped off the golden gate bridge poor guy all he wanted was to buy some lingerie for his wife did this story influence mark zuckerberg i would say yes because in the year 2006 mark zuckerberg walked out of a 1 billion dollar offer from yahoo and then the yahoo chairman said i have never seen somebody walk away from a billion dollars so that's the power of a story and today facebook is valued at more than 100 billion dollars so that's that's the power of stories so while a statement of fact or metaphors will make you understand things will help you tell the meaning of what is being spoken it does not influence behavior whereas a story really really influences that behavior so some of the storytelling propositions are uh, many times we think that storytelling is an art and it is not something that i can do or you can do or we can do it requires a lot of creative brains so because we identify and associate storytelling mostly with movies okay and we don't put ourselves in the league in the league of steven spielbergs or mani ratnams of the world so we think that storytelling is actually an art and it is not for the normal human beings which actually is not true when you go to work you don't tell stories when you come back home when you narrate your day to your children or to your wife or to your spouse okay the most the, the the easiest way by which you do is through the form of stories you talk about how bad your commute was from the college or the, from your office to your home from your college to your home so you you get into the habit of telling stories but however when it comes to your workplace you typically don't do that because you don't think that it is a formal way of communicating so the problem essentially lies with higher education the problem lies with the fact that whenever we are asked to do a presentation we immediately start to uh, put things on a powerpoint and then we go and display the powerpoint and we start clicking i normally don't use a powerpoint because it is a webinar i'm using a powerpoint if it is an in in person session i typically don't use a powerpoint the maximum that i use is a white book okay but since it is a webinar and i wanted to pass across some points i have used a powerpoint so otherwise uh, um, i use typically stories to do all my communication only when i have to do show some data i use a powerpoint otherwise i don't do that so the, the, some of the propositions are uh, a storytelling is an ancient art that hasn't changed much at all okay and the eff- effective use of storytelling in organ- organizations involves crafting and performing a well made story and it's a rare skill and a compellingly told well made story is effective okay so all of these propositions are myths about storytelling okay so none of them are actually true okay so each one of us have a storyteller in ourselves okay so we'll have to identify what stories work for us and what stories do not work for us and you don't have to follow a typical template of a story also so that's why uh, in my introduction also bala was mentioning for me an anecdote is a story an example is a story when when you have uh, two photographs which shows you know before i was 
uh, 90 kgs and today and 67 kgs. That itself is a story. That has all the elements of the story. You have a protagonist, you have a challenge, there is a weight loss, and you have a resolution, and you have done something to do it. So that's, that's those two photographs uh, are a typical exemplification of what a story could be. So that's, that's, those are things that which you should look at and instead of going by this proposition, so all of these are myths in, according to me because it's not a rare skill and anybody can become a storyteller. Okay. So what is a story structure? Okay. So when you look at it, uh, you have to set the scene, then you introduce the characters, then you begin the journey. So here the obstacle is what is the conflict or the challenge. So the hero encounters an obstacle. And then the hero overcomes the obstacles and then the, resolve, the story gets resolved. So everything ends well and everybody goes home happily. So this first six points are typically the uh, uh, structure of a classic story. Okay, And the remaining three points, make the point, ask the question, restate the point. This is something that you should use in a corporate setting or when you do purpose driven stories. For example, if you are working for an NGO or if you are working for an organization where you are doing stories behind a particular purpose, for a particular purpose, then you need to have that point very, very clear as to what is it that you are driving across with that story. And then you ask the question and figure out a way by which uh, you restate the point or come up with a phrase that pays. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you a personal story now. Okay, and I want the audience members or the people who are in this webinar to ch to respond and chat as to what is the phrase that would explain that story. Okay, so uh, I'll just repeat. I'm going to narrate a personal story, and uh, I want you to come up with a phrase that will explain what that story is all about. Okay, so uh, in the year 2010. 11 around that time so uh, in Hyderabad uh, they moved the airport to the newer location the place where it is currently and uh, I was invited by an organization to come and speak about the power of positive change and my session was at 6 30 in the evening so normally whenever there is a session I typically take the flight one day in advance so that uh, I don't have to do the last minute rush but this program was at 6 30 in the evening so I decided to take a morning flight to Hyderabad and so uh, I booked into a SpiceJet flight at 11.15, which was supposed to reach me at 12.05 at Hyderabad. I felt that I have about six and a half hours to reach the venue and uh, be comfortable around that. But I received a message early in the morning from SpiceJet stating that the flight has been delayed by two hours. I still felt that I would reach by 2, 2.30. Okay, that would still give me a lot of time. So I went into the airport. I checked in. I was waiting for the boarding announcement, which was not coming at all. Okay, and finally, we boarded the flight at 3.30. 3.40 and it reached Hyderabad airport at 4.30. Okay, so my session was at 6.30. I still felt that I have two hours to uh, reach the venue. So I, when once I came out of the uh, airport, so there was a shuttle service that was leaving Hyderabad airport. Okay, And uh, uh, since it was like uh, the early days of the new airport, there weren't many uh, providers of uh, cars. Okay, so I went and checked out at the counter, cars on rent, if I can get a cab to reach the venue. And they said the uh, earliest that they can get me a cab is at 5.40. Okay, so that may not be enough sufficient for me to reach the venue. So, and then I went and checked with Meru cabs. None of them were coming and Ola and Uber weren't that famous those days. So I, was, uh, I went and checked when is the next shuttle. The next shuttle was at 5.45. So I was stuck. So I called up the organizers to figure out if there is something that I can do about it or if they can move my session by half an hour or 45 minutes. And I was informed that the, that the session, that, that my session was the last one for the day. And post that, they were planning to have cocktail and dinner. So once they move into cocktail and dinner, it's very difficult for them to pull the audience back into the session. So now I was stuck. So I went out and I saw one Mercedes Benz that was standing there and there was a driver was standing outside it. I went and asked him if he can give me a lift to the venue. And he agreed and he took me and I reached the venue on time. And I started my session with this story where we all together uh, created the phrase that explained uh, uh, the story that which uh, I just narrated. Can, can, you, can, we, can, can we have the participants uh, type down as to what is a phrase that would explain the story? Um, so your screen is not uh, visible. Your presentation is not visible. Now is it visible? Yes. Fine. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to switch to the chat screen to see what is being typed. So that's the reason why the screen is invisible. Can I move to the chat screen? I'll wait for them to type. Yeah, fine. Then I'll do one thing. You can stop sharing the 
Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Then. Yeah. So can we have the participants? Yeah. So I hear things like all is well that goes well. Yeah. Journey towards taking webinar. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll just wait a few more seconds for anybody else to type in their messages. Journey towards taking over. So yeah, so when, when I did this session uh, in the place where I was talking about the power of positive change, I they came up with a number of things like uh, you should always have a plan B, you should uh, plan in advance, and you should have uh, uh, taken precautionary measures, you should have asked the organizers to uh, arrange for a cab for you to reach the venue. So there were so many, the power of positivity is something that somebody has typed. Problems faced during the journey, somebody has typed. All is good that ends well, somebody has typed. So finally, the phrase that which we all came up together was, uh, look for the Mercedes. Okay, so that was the phrase that we came up with, look for the Mercedes, okay. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, 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 I, I'm still connected with uh, hundreds of them who attended that session, and each one of them remember me with that phrase, look for the Mercedes, okay? And uh, this was not my original story. I said that in first person, so that it makes uh, uh, more sense, okay? So in fact, uh, uh, what was found, uh, what was found there was not a Mercedes Benz. It was actually a wagon R car, okay? So the moment I say Mercedes Benz, it becomes aspirational. The moment I say wagon R, it doesn't really, uh, appear aspirational at all. So that's the reason why a little bit of uh, fiction in your stories is permitted in your personal stories in order to make it aspirational, in order to make it interesting. But the authenticity of the story should not change. Okay, so that's that's where it is. So I'll, I'll go back to sharing my scene. So that's the, uh, the phrase that we came up with. So look for the Mercedes. So now you just tell me if the screen is visible. Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. So, uh, in fact, uh, mm, uh, in the year 2005, I bought my first car. Okay, so before buying my first car, I did a lot of research around what car should be bought and what are the features that I'm looking at and what is my budget and what will keep my EMI slow. Okay, and then I discussed with my wife. So, we decided to buy an uh, Maruti Alto. Okay, so we went to a car showroom in uh, Chennai, in Virgambakam. So, we were very clear that what we wanted. So, we said, uh, uh, we want to buy a Maruti Alto. And the salesperson said, come sir, please, uh, I'll take you to a Maruti Alto. So he made me sit on the driver's seat. So uh, uh, I won't call myself fat, but I'm very well endowed. Okay, so the fact that I'm very well endowed, so I was finding it difficult to fit into the car, but still I felt that this is a good car for me. Okay, and then uh, uh, the salesperson told me, uh, why don't you just come out? Okay, and then he asked me to go and sit inside a wagon arm. Okay, so I went and sat inside. And then he asked my wife and my son, who was about uh, a year old that time. Okay, so he, he made both of them sit on the passenger seat in the front row. And then he took a photograph of us using a Polaroid camera. Okay, and then he showed the photograph to us and then said, this photograph, I mean, your family looks great in this car. Look at this photograph. So the moment we looked at it, we felt that we should probably buy a wagon R and we ended up buying a wagon R. Okay, so which was about uh, uh, 80, 90 K more than what we had uh, initially planned to uh, invest in a car. So that's how I bought my first car. Okay, so here what has happened is the fact that the salesperson was able to engage us emotionally with that photograph. That's what made us pick up that, uh, this, uh, made us make the decision of buying that car, though we hadn't originally planned to buy a wagon. Okay, so that's, that's how uh, powerful, you know, uh, when it comes to, uh, using emotions as a part of your uh, uh, sales page or as a part of your communication. For instance, you look at all advertisements. Okay, so there are three primary emotions that are there in every advertisement. One is fear. Okay, if you don't have it, you will have this problem. If you have, if you don't have this, 
what imagine what would happen so that's that's the fear that is uh, induced in all of us and then you have empathy and then you have sympathy so these are the three common emotions in every sales pitch and in every communication that makes people take decisions that's make that makes people take out money from their pocket and give it to somebody else so that's the power of uh, stories because you address the emotions of a person so you don't really address the objectivity or the logic of a person instead you address the emotions of a person and most often than not it is emotions that make us make an investment that is that, that makes us make a purchase and not really the logic or the objectivity that which we human beings have and then many times uh, when you try to define the structure of a story and then even if you read information about stories there's a lot of things that which may not be applicable to you and me when we actually tell our stories okay so in the year 2013 i along with a friend of mine who is a professional cricketer we wanted to uh, go and watch uh, india versus australia match that was being played at chepak and it was a second day so we took a train from kodambakkam to chepak okay so we had to change over at fort and then move, get into another train to reach uh, chepak stadium so we got into the train and there was one australian who was also there in the train so he came to us and asked would he be able to get tickets at chepak for the second day uh, how far it is and how much time does it take to reach the stadium and all of that and we told him we are also going there so he can tag along with us so he came along with us and once we reached chepak stadium we realized that he was carrying a bottle of mineral water okay and we told him they don't allow mineral water bottles into the stadium for uh, for security reasons that uh, they fear that uh, uh spectators might throw those water bottles onto the pitch okay so as soon as we told that to him he immediately threw the water bottle on the sides so this friend of mine who was standing next to me he looked at him and he asked him would you do that in australia okay and this australian did not know how to respond and he felt uh, uh, so shameful and he was trying to actually pull that uh, water bottle out and that's when my friend said no 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 relax even we wouldn't do that in australia okay i narrated the story uh, in an open mic session uh, in egmore okay so the moment i finished it and came back one of the professional storytellers came to me and she said she did not hear a story there was no telling there is no uh, build up of the scene or uh, the characters are not explained well or what is that australian like okay so how does he feel to be in india what was his world in australia so those are things that which you, you need to have said so whatever anecdote that which you shared has to be worked right from the beginning for you to make it into a story okay well was i surprised i was not okay because that is how traditional stories are being looked at but i had one huge insight from the conversation that i had that you should be, be you should be aware of the well told story so you don't really need all of these characterizations and uh, all of these uh, uh, scene building character setting and all of that in a story that can be in the form of an anecdote that can be told for a defined purpose so that's where i understood i should you should be aware of the well told story okay and it also has to be relevant in terms of content and context so and there was this child who comes back home okay he is a 6 year old child who comes back home from school and his mother looks at him and asks so what did you do at school so the child says uh, uh, my teacher told us all a story so the mother asks what was the story all about and the story was about lord hanuman lord rama asking hanuman to go to lanka to meet sita okay so the mom is a bit curious now so she asks him so how did he go so the child says oh yeah he went to the chennai airport took the air lanka flight and then reached lanka so no the mom is surprised did she really tell you this way the child says no if i tell you the way she told us you won't believe me so that's that's the level of exposure that children have today so uh, when you do purpose driven stories okay so it has to be relevant in terms of content as well as in terms of context so and it has to be extremely extremely believable so that it doesn't confuse anybody in the audience so the mythological stories have their own uh, purpose and reasons but they may not be correct in the context of uh, uh, where you are trying to communicate where you are trying to put your point across so it has to be relevant in terms of content and context and then this is this is a very very popular uh, uh, thing called who can be a storyteller okay and why would somebody be I, mean, i keep talking about personal stories right so many a times i keep getting this question why would somebody be interested in my personal stories okay so i i always ask them back this question so who has inspired them in their lives okay most people come up with names like mahatma gandhi bill gates steve jobs 
So the problem with all of these inspirational people is they are, yes, fairly inf inspirational, but do they inspire you in the smallest possible ways? No, because we have already put them on a pedestal. We don't think that we can reach the levels of Mahatma Gandhi. We can reach the levels of Steve Jobs. So we have already put them on a pedestal. But whereas when I tell my stories, it is very natural for you to think of similar stories from your life. The moment I am able to make you think of stories that has happened in your life that are similar to what I am talking about, then I have been successful. Then I have made my progress. Then I have communicated well. So that's what it is. So in fact, my wife keeps saying, uh, uh, at home, you're monosyllabic. Okay, so you don't tell stories, you don't tell jokes, but you're making a living out of being a storyteller. So, which essentially means anybody can be a storyteller. Everybody can be a storyteller. And all of us have so many stories buried in us. Okay, the only thing is we'll just have to dig them out and come out and say it. Okay, so when I say stories, see, many a times uh, people are afraid, okay, as to what would be a good story. Okay, so when I started telling stories, okay, so when uh, I trained myself on stories, I attended multiple, multiple workshops, I read them. Um, so many number of books on storytelling and i kept figuring out uh, i did research on uh, some of the fa most famous communicators of this world as to what is it that they have uh, said that which made people uh, so very inspired by what they have spoken and all that so after after all of these things i understood okay so this is what is the structure that i would feel comfortable in so that's when i decided okay i will go out and help people with their stories i would go out, go out and help companies communicate what they want to communicate in the form of stories. I would help companies communicate the features of the products in the form of stories, communicate the success in the, in the form of stories. So that's when uh, I decided, but I, I, I was actually uh, mixing up two things. One was on corporate storytelling. The other one was I was trying to tell stories to children. Okay, so uh, that's when I went and met with one of my friends who was working in a school. And uh, I told her that I have become a professional storyteller. So she said uh, she didn't even wait and the uh, perfect act of trust. She just picked up the phone, called up the principal of the school and said, uh, we have a very good storyteller here and we should uh, get him to do a session here. Otherwise, we would lose him. Okay. So the session was set up for that Saturday and they invited 60 people. 40 of them were their teachers and 20 of them were my friends. Okay, so I went there, not only was I afraid to be standing in front of people to tell stories, I would even forget the stories that I was going to say, I would even forget which stories I was going to tell. So I made the friend of mine uh, carry a placard and make her, made her sit in the front row so that I get to see what stories I was going to say. So that's how I began my storytelling uh, career. And in fact, I told them in birthday parties, I told them in corporate events, I told them in one-on-one uh, -on -one workshops with people where I was trying to uh, convert a PowerPoint into a story form. So uh, these are initial uh, jobs that I picked up. I even went to my son's school, which is a Montessori school. And I went and uh, did the multiple uh, storytelling sessions for them. Okay, so that's how I honed all of my storytelling skills. And now I actually avoid uh, going to the schools. I do only the corporate storytelling aspect. And I also help companies in uh, uh, converting the demonstrations and all that in the form of stories. So this is what, uh, uh, and I practice every story at least 40 times before I take it to the audience. Okay, so because uh, uh, the fact is, even if you tell the same story again and again, where uh, the audience are the same, they would still get different messages from your stories because the perception of uh, their listening changes, the perception of uh, your telling changes. So uh, in a sense, it's, it's like uh, uh, there are multiple perspectives that come into a story also. So okay, uh, storytelling is not just about telling, it is also about story listening. Okay, so there is, there is a lot of thoughts that are going on in my mind while I'm listening to your stories, okay? So some of them will be thoughts that are uh, inspired by the stories that you're saying. Some of them would be thoughts that are not connected to the stories that I'm hearing, okay? So story listening is equally, equally important. So that's the reason why storytellers typically look for in-person sessions because they get to see the expressions on the face of the audience members and then they get to understand what has to be tweaked and how it has to be changed, what pivoting there has to be, there has to happen in a story and all of it. So that's where uh, the entire uh, personal storytelling thing comes into play. Okay, so the do's and don'ts of uh, stories are you speak, you tell a story as if you're talking to an individual, not to an audience. Okay. And your story is the bait. So if, if, you can, if you have a bait and if the fish doesn't catch the bait, 
would you blame the fish no right so you won't call a fish like unmotivated or lazy or anything you just have to look for a better bait so that the fish comes and catches the bait so if your story isn't working then you look for a better story for the defined purpose so that's that's what needs to be done and it has to be authentically true not just factually correct so i'll tell you a statement which is factually correct but may not but it is not authentically true so the factually correct statement is 700 people happily reached the shores of new york after the titanic's maiden voyage it is factually correct 700 people actually reached the shores of new york after the titanic's uh, uh, sinking okay so but it's not authentically true because people are not going to look at that story as a happy story right so and then you also should allow people to express their creativity and have some fun so i'll give you an example here so there's this airlines called southwest airlines okay so they consider themselves to be the lowest cost airlines in the domestic circuit of us okay i'm going to tell this story in first person so i was traveling by southwest airlines and the flight steward uh, gave his introduction uh, as follows okay so he said hello everyone this is bingo and i will be your flight steward for the for your flight from baltimore to orlando many of you might be wondering why i am called bingo because that's what my parents named me but why did they name me bingo because i was a fifth child that they had and they desperately wanted to have a boy child and the first four children were girls the moment i showed up it was natural for my parents to say bingo and that's what my name is so he says a personal story as a part of a flight journey okay and that still now till now reminds my story about southwest airlines so whenever i talk about southwest airlines i keep reminded of the story called bingo okay so that's that's the that is like where you are express you are allowing people to express their individuality and their creativity and keeping the place a fun place to work as well and you should also use satire and humor very very effectively in your stories for instance uh, i was standing in an airline counter and there was a guy who was stand who was ahead of me so he was asking for a window seat and the lady at the counter said sir we have uh, sold out all of our uh, window seats i won't be able to help you so immediately he, he said do you know who i am okay so she said sorry sir we don't have any window seats available so we would be able to give you only a non window seat it can be an aisle seat or a middle seat okay and this guy got a bit angry and he shouted saying that do you really know who i am so that's when she said she pulled out the mic and said uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen we have a passenger here who do not who, who does not know who he is can somebody please come here and help him find himself the moment she said that this guy also broke up okay and then he started smiling and then he walked away with an aisle seat happily okay so that's that's how powerful humor is when it is used in a context okay so for satire satire is fairly difficult to get not many people are actually adept at uh, Uh, coming up with uh, satirical things but i'll give you an example in the 1992 presidential elections in the united states george bush was attacking hillary clinton as unfit to become the first lady of the country after she accepted that she did not spend her teen baking cookies okay and the relentless attack of the white house on hillary clinton ended when bill clinton's campaign team responded with the following statement George Bush is not running for the president he is apparently campaigning to become the first lady so that's when George Bush's uh, team stopped this attack on Hillary Clinton and the rest is history Bill Clinton anyway became the president at that point in time so and then you also use personal stories that you can draw from your own experiences okay so what it does is you don't have to memorize them you don't have to script it because it is something that has happened to you it is something that you have experienced it yourself and it will be very very authentic when it comes out from you so though you may use different words and the language can be different from one time to another but the moment you extract it from your own personal experiences the stories become all the more powerful and then so typically people talk about written on investment on storytelling right so what is a return on investment on storytelling so uh, uh, i have two stories to tell you here okay so one is one states that it is 17 euros per word okay the other one says it is 2806 percentage roi or 28.66 times okay so there was a person uh, uh, who was trying to sell a 1997 manufactured opel uh, tigra car okay and uh, he was trying to sell it in the year 2016 so and he auctioned it in ebay so in ebay ebay allows you to write long stories along with your product that which you are auctioning so he wrote about his pregnant girlfriend his encounter with his with cops at the age of 18 his relationship with his father his friend who advised him to sell his car to a hobby car enthusiast as the car is neither new nor 
in a very good shape okay so this is what he wrote as a story and then a car that would have fetched him about 2000 euros instead in that auction fetched him 55000 euros that's a whopping increase of 53000 euros and the the story the story had about 3200 words so when you calculate the 53000 for 3200 words it's about 17 euros per word that's what uh, the story got him as an roi okay and then there is another story is like in 2009 american authors rob walker and joshua they came up with a very very curious experiment so they bought a lot of stuff like cork bottles birthday candles uh, paper fans pencil cases uh, paper weights and napkins rings and all that from old shops okay and they came and uh, uh, caught hold of some creative writers and asked them to come up with stories behind each of these items so they came up with stories and then they auctioned it on ebay and all of these materials they spent about 128 dollars in buying and they sold it all for 3612 dollars so that's that's a 28.06 times increase in value because of the stories that were used okay so that's that's the power of stories because uh, a, a simple story can actually emotionally move people to take actions okay otherwise logically and objectively if you have looked at it you would never have bought that opel car for 55000 euros you would have spent only the 2000 euros or you would have probably asked for a discount on the 2000 euros so so but with a story accompanying it people did not mind bidding and spending that kind of money so that's that's the power of a story and then so see basically if you, if objective thinking does not make people laugh or cry or even give money to beggars or strangers okay whereas emotions do and typically it is uh, the dopamine Uh, is a chemical in your brain that seeks rewards okay so it chases rewards and raises and and its level rises in the brain when you see you hear something that you want for the rich it will be rolex watches and bmw 7 series for the normal ones it would be food clothing shelter uh, probably sex okay and for the uh, for for somebody who wants to communicate it definitely definitely has to be storytelling okay so with that uh, i come to the end of the session so i would take questions now you can reach out to me at uh, sabha@stickytales.com or on my mobile number that's listed here and if any of you wants to do any stories and if you need help in crafting it or in editing it or in modifying it or if you want to tell it to somebody okay so i can uh, do it all on the phone okay so, and i can help you with it and i would not charge you for any of these things okay so i would love to see so many of you becoming storytellers and using stories uh, uh, as a form of uh, communication okay so now uh, uh, bala we can take questions so mind blowing mr sabha it was I, i just watched my watch you know it's almost 10:51 okay so okay. it's uh, <laughs> really mesmerized and you know even i couldn't able to turn around this side and that side okay. so all all uh, well crafted and you know it's it's you know uh, I'm just looking. Uh, once I go home, I should say some stories to my son. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. which, which, uh, you know, eventually, uh, you know, improve my storytelling as well as my communication also. Right. So, thanks, thanks for the eye-opening session. Uh, definitely, uh, we will take some questions. I will just look into some questions. Uh, So one of the question is being in academic academics how storytelling will make the students to be more attentive in the class and how to start the professional profession of storytelling see in fact uh, i i used to work with a company called uh, tedasol okay so they were uh, in the process of selling uh, data loggers so when i say data loggers uh, uh, these are devices that captures uh, Uh, a bunch of uh, readings using sensors for instance you can capture temperature you can capture humidity you can do ph level of uh, solution okay so there are multiple experiments for which they were using it okay so uh, so they were trying to uh, sell this into uh, schools and they were successful in selling it but the problem for them was they weren't able to make their students or the teachers adopt in using those uh, devices while the devices were bought by the schools it was it were lying idle so that's when they came to me and then we put together a bunch of uh, uh, training materials so which was all story driven okay so what we do is instead of going and talking about uh, an experiment see for instance uh, many a times uh, i use this as an example okay so uh, people come and say can you define a circle okay 
So uh, people come up with uh, multiple definitions. There is a center point, and then the radius would be the same across all three sixty degree angles. So they came up with so many things. Okay, so finally we uh, figured out. Uh, okay, so how do you explain or define a circle? So circle is actually a polygon with infinite sides. So what we used to do is we used to take a circle and then put a triangle inside. So now we ask what a triangle is. Okay, so triangle is a polygon with three sides. Okay, so now we take out the triangle, we put a square. Okay, so now what is a square? Square is a polygon with five, four sides. Okay, so then we put a pentagon. It's with five sides, then hexagon, septagon, octagon. So we keep increasing on one side. So the moment you keep increasing on one side, the shape goes towards a circle. It doesn't really become a circle, but it keeps going towards a circle. So that's when we identify, we come up with the insight. Oh, okay, circle is a polygon with infinite sides. So we don't need any other definition to define a circle now. Okay, so now people have understood what it is. So these kind of anecdotal stuff we created for each of those experiments, where we went and started having discussions with the children, we allowed them to come up with hypotheses. Okay, as to this would be right, this would not be right. This is how we are going to look at it. And then we started doing these experiments, and then which either proved or disproved their hypothesis. So that's how uh, we structured the whole thing. So likewise, even in, in, in anything that which you teach, you can come up with such uh, uh, storification of what you are trying to teach and then get your students to come up with hypothesis and then prove or disprove that hypothesis. So that way you kind of own the learning. Instead of you know uh, going and telling somebody what is Pythagoras theorem, allow them to arrive at Pythagoras theorem so that the child or the student owns that learning. So I'm just giving you uh, simpler examples that which would be applicable for school students, but uh, the same can be extrapolated and uh, uh, brought it out for engineering students also. Okay. Uh, next we can... Um, listeners should have more interest than teller. Am I right, sir? Listeners should have more interest. See, story listening makes storytelling better. Okay. But most often than not, okay, so I have uh, observed this many times. So I used to go for a lot of meetings. Okay. So we sit around and I know that people are losing interest. That's when I come up with the statement. Uh, you know what? Last Tuesday, the moment I say this, everybody looks up from their mobile phones. Okay. Because that's, that's a story trigger. Okay. At 1030 in the morning on Tuesday, the moment you say something like this, Okay, so that's a story trigger. So when you use stories, it's very likely that they would listen. Okay, the level of distraction would be minimal. The, the ability for them to understand would be very, very high. The ability for them to recount and retell is also very, very high. So stories typically will not make people lose their interest. Okay, unless it's a very long drawn. Okay, so if you're telling a story for 20 minutes, then probably people will lose interest. So you should always keep your stories to say about maximum 90 seconds to 120 seconds, which is like one and a half to two minutes, not beyond that. So max max that you can go, like if you keep it like really, really interesting, three minutes, not beyond that. Definitely not beyond three minutes because then you might probably lose your audience. I find that. So storytelling is an art of our life. If so, how to attract people by telling stories? I won't call it an art in the first place. Okay, neither would I call it a science. Okay, so these are everyday experiences that which we come across. Okay, so the, we, there are, there's so much learning for us from even the auto auto driver that we use or the taxi driver that we take. Okay, so in fact, uh, uh, th there are multiple uh, messages that I received when this lockdown started. Okay, saying that you know I help my uh, uh, taxi guy, I help my auto guy. Okay, because uh, they are not able to run it and all that. So that uh, forced me to also actually uh, speak to the people whom I regularly use. I, in fact, asked a lot of them if they need any uh, financial help and all that. And many of them were very, very, very honest. Okay, They said, uh, so till now we have money, so we are able to take care of ourselves. In case if we need anything, we'll call you Okay, or we'll get in touch with you. Because nobody was trying to uh, milk the situation. Nobody was trying to take unfair advantage of the fact that you were trying to help and all that. So this itself is a learning. Okay, so this, this whole thing can be taken out and then used as a story in a context Okay, as to why you should trust people. So uh, many times, uh, uh, I, I just uh, forgot to mention a few things, okay? When you're talking about personal stories, how do I find out personal stories from my life? You would have had a really good friend. You can do a story about them. You would have had uh, uh, your relationship with your father, with your parents can be a story, okay? You would have had a school bully. You would have had a bad boss. You would have had a very trusting boss. Okay, so all of these things, instances can be culled out as stories, so. 
points are next uh, fear to speak how to improve see there is no magic pill here okay so uh, the only way by which you can improve is uh, look for stage time as much as you get go and stand in front of people and start talking okay so uh, there have been cases where people have come and stood in front of people okay and uh, they were uh, not able to even speak a single word and those guys have gone on to become great public speakers okay for instance uh, uh, let's go and fight at the beaches okay we will fight at the beaches is a very famous uh, uh, dialogue of winston churchill during second world war okay and if you look at his uh, uh, history he was a very very uh, he was extremely afraid to go and stand in front of people and speak during his early days and then he went on to become a great orator so the most important thing is just show up in front of people and then start talking whether you are right or wrong do not hesitate to go in front of people look for screen time look for audience time look for stage time okay so that's the most important thing that will allow you to because there are multiple people who will come up with tips unless you feel that you have to change you will not change and the only way by which you will feel that you have to change is by having this stage time so go and stand in front of people and start talking that's the easiest way to get out the get out the fear that you have in you uh, how to select stories where can we have some good stories right so i mean good stories i mean you are the uh, best person okay your experiences are the best place to collect stories okay so the most important thing is uh, i have a template for that so where i would say uh, figure out where do you come from okay and figure out where you are and figure out where do you want to go so it's it's a continuum where do you come from to where you are to where you want to go okay identify stories from your life that is in line with this continuum okay so it has to make sense between where you are and where you come from and then it also has to make sense with where you want to go so from there you identify those stories so every one of us i am very very certain that each one of us will have at least 40 to 50 personal stories okay of which where you are currently and in relationship to where you come from you would at least get about half a dozen to a dozen stories so make use of those stories script them out start practicing it with people in your family with your friends and then get it onto the stage okay so that's the, you are the best source of your own stories okay so you don't have to look for i mean see definitely don't take out uh, stories from you know seven ways of effective people or chicken soup for the soul and stuff like that because they are good stories but uh, they are not from your personal experiences okay so you don't internalize it and speak about it next we have you know, how to deliver a story in an effective way even though it is well known by the audience for example ramayana and mahabharata well i am not really qualified to give that uh, answer okay because ramayana and mahabharata even i have seen it in multiple forms okay so uh, in fact uh, uh, there is uh, an author by name devdat patnaik okay so who writes about uh, indian mythology and how it is relevant to the corporate world okay so uh, uh, there are multiple books written by him also so you can make use of it to figure out uh, what can be used in what context okay and what can be used in different uh, situations okay so the the easiest way to do it is figure out a purpose and then move towards the purpose so every other uh, uh, aspect or the element of a story you can ignore as long as you have the purpose in your mind okay the rest of it will fall in place automatically so, so next we have lecturing in the way of storytelling is effective uh, see if you are talking about engineering yes okay so there are uh, uh, places where you may not be able to use stories okay so if you're talking about a corporate presentation stories would be absolutely uh, uh, the easiest way to go about okay however you can set the context in the form of stories and then you get into the theoretical aspects of it okay so uh, basically what stories do is it enhances the power of data okay data alone may not move people okay so the, the story brings value to the data that is being presented stories bring value to the uh, topics that are being discussed okay so uh, in a in a very academic uh, in a technical environment you can use stories for the context okay so for instance uh, uh, many of you uh, would be able to appreciate this people study uh, uh, calculus okay quadratic equations okay people study differentiation integration and all of that most children do not know 
as to why they should be doing differentiation and integration and what are the applications of it at a school level only when you come to an engineering or you know your masters level that's when you really it, it hits you you know oh, okay this is the reason why i have been doing differentiation and integration till such time we were told to do things by rote okay so these are multiple forms by which it can be done so you go and do it so that's how it is so maybe if the context is brought in then the student is able to get the application part of it then and there then they would be able to appreciate differentiation and integration much better than what they do currently so the, from the context side of it yeah stories can be used that will make it uh, very very interesting for people to learn also so we have do we have tools methodologies any blueprint format to start storytelling see there are multiple templates you can come up with your own templates also okay so there are books written by uh, very famous storytellers now uh, if you look at it uh, there is a designation called chief storytelling officer in uh, microsoft there is a designation called chief storytelling officer in world bank okay there is a designation called chief storytelling officer in oracle okay and then a um, lot of companies have storytelling circles okay so where they come and just share stories that happened in each of the departments okay whether or not it has a purpose okay so the storytelling circle uh, collates all of them so microsoft has a blog called microsoft monday mornings okay so where they pull out the best stories that have been recounted by their employees and then publish it every monday so uh, if you look at a template yes there are templates that which are available uh, there is a book called uh, leaders guide to storytelling written by steven denning okay so that's got uh, uh, multiple templates of uh, different forms of stories that which you can use so you can even google for uh, springboard story template okay so you would be able to get that uh, template for you to use okay so see all of these templates are only starting points but over a period of time as you start using it so you will come up with your own templates that which works for you because finally you'll also have to do the telling you can't really go by what somebody else has defined so you also have to see what works for you and what doesn't work for you so tips to tell about autobiography autobiography yeah, that's that's what all your personal stories are about okay so don't be all about yourself okay so also bring in you know people uh, related to you in your autobiography okay so uh, and yeah so again the template that i said where do you come from where you are now so have that connection between those two so that way uh, it makes it interesting for the audience to know what kind of person you are okay instead of going and saying you know what i studied in iit you know what i have 20 years of experience in this you know what i have helped uh, this company do uh, so much money in uh, so short a time okay so all of these are good uh, points to carry but however uh, if you go and tell a personal story that which they can identify themselves with you that would make you all the more endearing to them then they would start to listen to what you speak and they would start to follow what you say okay. so and you also have to keep in mind the different cultural contexts okay so for instance if you go to germany and tell a story it has to be different from how you tell it in japan or how you tell it in us or in india so that also has to be kept in mind so. Can you please tell a short story as an example for corporate stories? Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> in fact, I was consulting a company, okay, and uh, uh, they had a large project from a leading bank in the US. Okay, so uh, they put together a team of six people, and uh, uh, they were supposed to deliver on this project. Okay, and this team of six people, the problem was all of them were similarly experienced. Each one of them had about ten years of experience, and all of them were. Uh, similarly positioned in different branches of their office most of them were like tech leads or project leads so these six people were brought in together okay and this project had to be delivered in six weeks out of their bangalore office so uh, one week passed by and nothing really happened at all okay so the branch manager of bangalore called me up and he said you know this is what is the problem i have can you come and help me so i was just telling him why don't you tell stories okay so he said uh, uh, would that work so or can you come and do the stories i said no no i am a third person so they may not take me seriously as a branch head if you organize for a meeting without any agenda okay call them at 10 o'clock in the morning without any agenda and all the six of them were pulled in and this uh, branch head told the story from his childhood which had no relationship to what they were doing or what they were working on okay so it was it was just a narration from his childhood he told a story and then everybody like looked at him and all that and he asked each one of them to tell a story from the childhood 
and all the six of them told stories from their childhood okay so because they weren't even seeing eye to eye on anything because there was so much ego among them and uh, so the project did not progress at all so now they all told a story from their childhood so now they start all of them started laughing they started looking at each other they started smiling and all that so once this got over then uh, this branch had told about a story where he faced a challenge in his office and how he overcame that in the last 12 months okay the moment he told that story they were like very appreciative of what he did okay and he asked each one of them to identify a challenge that happened in their workplace and how they overcame that so each one of them narrated an incident now they had respect for each other okay because they looked at the challenge the gravity of it and the way in which they handled it and all that so now they got to know each other a bit now they have respect for each other so now all he had to do is just figure out who has to lead the team and how the team has to get structured so that time they had a break and this guy again gave me a call and i told him uh, since they are all similarly experienced it's very difficult for you to find a leader so just figure out who has grown up with maximum number of siblings okay so they would be the ideal leaders okay for want of anything better to do an evaluation so he went back and then uh, he spoke about siblings and all that and then he asked them so there was one girl among those six who grew up in a joint family with seven cousins okay and that was given as a reason for her to be named as the leader of the project so they named it and by the time they finished that meeting they had a project plan in place okay with her as a leader and they completed that within those 6 weeks so this this is how well your personal stories can help in a corporate setting okay so even to influence behavior okay so that's that's an example that i could possibly i wanted to share bala you're not audible Okay. Okay. No, it's, okay no, it's right. uh, considering the time, we will uh, end up with the last question. Whether people should have patience to listen to storytelling? Uh, I don't think so. See, now you attended a webinar, and all you heard were a bunch of stories, right? So uh, it was not some uh, something where you had to really take notes. And I'm very sure that each one of you would have at least uh, one or two stories that you would have thought about from your own life after hearing the these stories that I spoke about. Okay, so it, listening to stories does not require passion. You are telling them requires uh, uh, a fair bit of it. Uh, listening uh, to stories actually helps in crafting your stories also. Okay, so over a period of time. Uh, it becomes second nature because we already have that as a second nature because we have been listening to stories throughout our lives. Only thing is, in a professional setting or in an educational setting, we don't listen to stories. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's eleven uh, ten now. We are uh, no ten minutes uh, ahead of the schedule. Okay. Anyway, you okay. know uh, the session was so good, so interesting, and you know the storytelling. Everyone should practice the storytelling. no so that is a matter you know the deliverable today and hope everybody who listens to this session will start telling at least stories from today at least right. one story or two stories if they practice it's a success for this session and for the chennai institute of technology for organizing program thank you thank you sir thanks thank a lot you. thanks everyone for uh, uh, being online thank, thank you sir thanks uh, all the participants for attending this event thank you